Hello everyone, welcome to the network trip. I'm continuing with the OSPF video series on my Rotic devices running Router OS 7. We'll discuss today virtual links. What exactly are virtual links? When do we need them? And how we are going to implement them on my Rotic devices? Let's dive in. One of the main requirements when building a multi-area OSPF topology is that all the areas must be connected to the backbone. But in some scenarios, we can be facing issues to meet that requirement. A virtual link is a temporal solution that we can use to simulate this direct connection to the backbone area. For example, if we check the topology that I have here, we can see that on the left, we have the backbone area. We have area zero. Then we have area one. So here we can identify R2 as one ABR. Since that router has one interface connected to area zero and another interface connected to area one. So at that point, we don't have any problem. Everything is according to the OSPF specifications. The problem comes when we are adding area two. Because now we have a new ABR, in this case R3, that is connected to area 1 and there is another interface connected to area 2. In this case, R2 doesn't have a direct connection to the backbone and that must be a requirement. So we are not getting that direct connection. So we can use a virtual link to simulate that direct connectivity. So how are we going to do that? So first we need to identify two endpoints. So those are two routers, but they must be area border routers. And one of them must have one interface connected to the backbone. In this case, we can identify R2 and R3. We can see that R2 has one interface connected to the backbone and the second interface connected to area one. R3 has one interface connected to the area one. So this is going to be the common area. And ether2 is connected to area two, the area that is facing issues due to the lack of direct connectivity to the backbone. After identifying those two ABRs, we'll perform the configuration of the virtual link on them. So basically we need to add an interface template that is going to create a virtual link. And now that transit area is going to be used to provide connectivity between area two and the backbone. As I mentioned before, this must be a temporal solution. Virtual links are not intended to be a permanent solution. So when we are designing the network, we won't use virtual links. But when we are running the network, probably sometimes we need to merge some networks and then we can face a special situation where we can't get direct connectivity to the backbone from a new area. In that case, we can use temporarily a virtual link, but then we must redesign the network to have all the areas connected directly to the backbone. How are we going to perform this process? After identifying those two ABRs, we need an interface template. And there are three fields that we must provide to make this possible. So the first one is area zero. This is always going to be area zero. Then we are going to specify the transit area and the neighbor ID. That's important. So this field is going to specify the neighbor ID, not the IP address. So if I check this diagram, if we are adding the interface template in R3, then R3 is going to add here the neighbor ID that is on the OFPF instance in R2. R2 is going to use the neighbor ID that the OFPF instance has in R3. I will jump to the lab now 
and then we'll see this in action. We have three areas. Area two is not directly connected to the backbone. If we are configuring OFPF following the process as explained in one of the previous videos here in the channel, we'll end with the following issue. I will go now to arg1 and let's check all the neighbor adjacencies and the routing table. So this is arg1. So basically now I only have the OFPF instance, the interface templates. I have one interface template for the LAN interface, the lookback, and also iter1. The LAN and lookback are passive because we are not expecting OFPF neighbors there. Then iter1 is expecting a neighbor. So if I go to neighbors, we can see that we have one neighbor and that is R2. But if I go to the routing table, we can see just a few OFPF routes. So we have the network 10100 slash 24, and we have the router ID for R2 and R3. So if we check the topology, 100 slash 24 is the network that is connecting R2 to R3. And additionally, we have the router ID for R2 and R3. But the backbone area is not getting information about the area two. And that is because this design is not according to the OFPF specifications. Let's check the routing table in R3. I have all the interface templates, iter1, iter2, and the lookback. If I check the neighbors, there are two neighbors. This is R2 and this is R4. But if I check the routing table, I can see only two OFPF routes. And those are coming from R4. This is the lookback address in R4, and this is the LAN network in R4. But it's not getting information from the remaining areas, such as the area zero in this case. How can we solve that problem? By using a virtual link. So we can simply create a virtual link between those two ABRs, and now area two is gonna use that virtual link to get a direct connection to the backbone. We can have multiple routers inside this transit area. In this case, we only have two of them, R2 and R3, but we can have more routers. For example, I can have another router here that can be Rx, and this still is gonna use only the ABRs. So the virtual link will go between the ABRs. So once that has been stated and we are ready to perform the configuration, we can start with R2. So the transit area is gonna be area one. If you don't know the neighbor ID, you can just check the instance in OFPF and you can get that information. If I go to instances, I can see this column, router ID, and it's using the object that is called ID-1. If I go to routing and then router ID, I can see that the entry with ID-1 has the value 10.3.3.3. If you are missing any of those columns, you can simply right click, then show columns, and you can select the one that you need. So the neighbor ID in R3 is 10.3.3.3. So now with that information, we can go to R2 and we'll configure that end of the virtual link. So this is R2. We need to go to interface templates I'm gonna add a new entry. Area is always gonna be zero. Then on network type, we need to specify virtual link. Then we need to specify the transit area. This is gonna be area one. And then the neighbor ID is 10.3.3.3. So we have that entry. And now we only need something similar in the second endpoint participating in this virtual link. So that is gonna be R3. We can go to R3 and we can simply add a new interface template. Area is gonna be zero. But in this case, I only can see area one and area two. And that is because R3 is connected just to area one and is connected to area two. So that means that we need to add a new area. Before adding the interface template, I will need to add a new area and that is gonna be area zero the ID all zeros. 
Now we can add the interface template, area, area zero, network type, virtual link, transit area, area one, and the neighbor ID is gonna be 10.2.2.2. .2 and we can click okay. And we can go now to areas and we can see that we are getting this flag here. That is transit capable. That's a good sign. So now if we go to IP routes, we can see all those routes coming from ARG1. We were missing those routes before. If I go back to ARG1, now we can see that we are getting the information that is coming from the area 2. We have the ID in the router 4 and additionally we have the network that has been advertised by R4. We are simulating a direct connection from the area 2 to the backbone. All the information from area 2 is available in the area 0. The next test to validate the connectivity is going to be to send a ping from the network 2.0 slash 24 to the network 00 slash 24. This is going to test the connectivity from end to end. So let's go to R4 and let's send a ping to validate a virtual link. So tools then ping. So this is going to 192.168.0.1 and this will go from 192.168.2.1 start and everything is working we can reach the remote network in the backbone area we have successfully completed a new ospf lab thank you for watching all these videos related to ospf on my rotic devices running router os 7. if you are interested in learning more about my rotic devices cisco devices fortinet palo alto checkpoint Please remember to subscribe to the channel, activate the bell, and share the channel with your friends. Because as a network engineers in our daily activities, we'll be dealing with devices coming from multiple vendors. And that's the idea behind the channel, to provide different tools, examples that we can use in real scenarios. Thank you, and I see you in the next one.